today is going to be on digital remastering and digital performer and the song I'll be using will be Clifford Hayes and the Louisville Stompers Dance Hall Shuffle. This is a classic uh, jazz piece from 1929. So first of all I'm using an mp3 I wouldn't normally master an mp3 but um, just for the purpose of this video to get it out there we're going to use that. Alright so the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to create a track, one with the effect, one without the effect. And our first step is we're basically just going to listen to the song real quick. We're going to add the effect of the Masterworks Equalizer. We're also going to add the Masterworks Compressor. Following that, we're going to use the Masterworks Leveler, which is for this specific style of music, as well as the Masterworks Limiter. Then finishing it off, we're going to use the Dynamics Effect by Motu, and on top of that, we're going to switch that to Limiter as well, so that we can get the final product and um, adjust that. So I'm just zeroing out everything on here. Okay. So I'm going to play it again. And the first effect we'll be manipulating will be the Masterworks Equalizer. So we're going to adjust the low frequency and the high, basically the top and the bottom of the EQ. Then we're also going to make everything visual and be able to see um, everything that comes through. So you can see the uh, graph here and you can see where the frequencies lie. One of the ways we'll calibrate this is we're going to select a frequency. We can um, mess with the gain, the Q, as well as the actual um, tone of the frequency. But by moving the frequency up and down you can hear the pink noise and then use that to kind of find the sweet spot of the sound even when the song is not playing so that you can use that and kind of get a feel for what you're adjusting. So right now I'm just going to go over the next few bands. On this uh, Masterworks EQ there are five bands as well as the um, low end and the high end cutoff. So let's just see what I'm doing on these. Usually this wouldn't take this short amount of time, it would take a lot longer.
All right, for our next step, we're gonna open the Masterworks compressor. A few of the things we're gonna do here is we're gonna solo out each bandwidth. There's three bands of EQ on this. First thing I wanna see here as well is, notice how I'm peaking. I shouldn't be above plus four on my output or my input. So I'm gonna decrease my input drastically just to fix that. And what I'm gonna be looking for is tuning each individual frequency one by one. Uh, adjustments to my threshold should be zero. Ratio should be three. Makeup gain is what we're adjusting. Everything else uh, kind of goes along for the ride. So the ratio I'm moving down to three. And the other thing besides that is the release. I'm gonna have that one. So this is kind of your standard. For everything besides makeup gain is gonna be stationary. You can use the bypass button, like I mentioned before, to kind of toggle in and out of hearing with or without the compression. Since this is an MP3, the compression is not gonna sound as drastic because it's already kind of been compressed and we don't wanna have distortion. So you won't hear it as well on an MP3. So I'm gonna kind of go through a three-step process. I'm gonna repeat the same steps for each, um, kind of adjusting the EQ or the um, filters here at the top. Same rules apply, zero on the threshold, 3.0 on the ratio, and uh, one on the release and attack as fast as you want it. So, you're going to clear that to see what your levels are at. And of course, use the bypass button to kind of see how it sounds with and without it. All right, so just using the bypass to turn on and off. So our next effect we're gonna use is the Masterworks Leveler. The thing about the Leveler is there's a lot of features to it. You can have it slow vintage or make it a limiter compressor or have it on standby. Um, we're gonna basically have it on limiter, but I'm gonna make that adjustment in a sec. I'm just going over the makeup gain and the gain reduction. We want it to be at four the VU level indicator, I want to have it at four. The response, I've noticed when you turn your response knob on, it kind of brings things up closer to zero. We want to just have it on four because of the purpose of this track. With other tracks, there's going to be different rules, but for the purpose of this track, we're going to have it at four. So I'm just showing you how it changes the, um, the readout on the meter there. Next tool we're using is the Masterworks Limiter, where as we play, you can see that we're peaking because we're at plus 12 here. 
So I'm going to make adjustments on the output, which it pairs both at the same time. So that's plus 12 coming in. And of course, we can adjust that threshold and change that. So if I clear the indicators after bringing the look ahead up and everything else, now it's coming in at plus 5 and it's coming out at 0. So you see how it's too high where it's coming in at plus 6. Re Reclear my indicators and I slowly adjust it. That's basically the whole cat and mouse game of mastering is making sure you're not peeking and asking yourself does this sound good or doesn't it. So notice we're coming in at plus 6, that's okay, we're not peaking, but I'm going to make finite adjustments, numerical adjustments, to get it where I want it to be. So, like I said before, it's an mp3, that's why our quality is not going to be as good. Next, we're going to graduate into the dynamics limiter here. That's the final step. Notice my input level, output level. I can, of course, get this to as close as plus four as possible, while this is as close to zero as possible. Notice my attack release threshold is all at zero. Threshold we're going to use in the future for like finite adjustment. Say you're in between three and four. We're going to kind of use that. So notice we are peaking down here on our board. We're peaking. So I'm going to assess that in a second. So the next thing I'm going to do here is clear all clipping indicators. That's actually command backslash. You can use that. And you only do that when the track is stopped. You'll be able to clear it out. So I'll just show you an example here. We're peaking. Now see how I just did that? How I cleared it? Saves you the time of going all the way up to project and scrolling down. All right, next we're going to take the duplicate, copy the track without the effects. We're going to hear that on its own. So right now I'm going to A and B it so you can hear the difference. All right, so notice how the track here, I'm playing both tracks and I'm kind of A and Bing one to the other. See how it just peaked? That's because both tracks are playing at the same time and the master track was reading that. So when you're mastering Realize when you're doing that so you don't think that the actual song's peaking, which in reality it's not. The clipping indicators just got alerted because I was playing both at the same time and that output went beyond the capacity of the board.
So another thing you can do is you can add an EQ to each track. So the Masterworks EQ can be added to the end of each track at the end. We won't be using this to manipulate the audio, but just for the visuals. That same graph I talked about at the beginning, I'll show you how we're going to compare graphs from one to the other. So notice you have your visuals here. I'm not messing with any of the dials, I'm just checking the readout. And then the other one, I'm going to, that's the one for no effects, this is going to be the one for effects. Same thing. There we go. So you can see here, just at the end, just for visual reference, it won't affect the sound at all. So just muting the audio and not hearing anything, you can see the slight differences in the end product from the frequency on the left opposed to the frequency on the right. So if you zoom in a little bit, you can actually see, instead of 24, you have it at 12. You can actually see how the levels are different on one compared to the next. See how my 200 number is kind of riding straight up, straight down while the 200 on the one on the right is never going above that certain point. So it's really hard to see the differences, but a careful eye will eventually get used to it. See, that wasn't so bad. Anyways, my name is Mike Strip, and you can look me up on beatport.com as well as iTunes. If you have any questions, you can actually email me directly. My email is bookings at djmikestrip.com. That's bookings at djmikestrip.com. Thanks so much. Have a good day.